So let's see how this goes. I thought, while I'm out here taking Logan for a walk, I'll try and answer a few questions. We'll do this as a video. Um, this might go all horribly wrong. <laughs> so the question I've been asked, I thought I'd try and answer this morning, is um, what are the benefits of your method of training versus the, the Thailand method? Because they're quite different. And to answer that, it's really two different uh, thoughts on, on how, how that training can benefit you. And of course, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's lots of different ways you can train. But really what I'm trying to do is just make sure that your training has all the benefits that we can get into it. So when you talk about my method, it's not, it's not really my method, I'm just applying sports science principles. So it's, um, it's more like the, the Thailand method is, is driven out of the opportunities and, and the history of what they've got over there. So there is, there is limited uh, training facilities. Most of it's quite basic. That is changing, of course, but um, that influences that style. And the Thai style is more about practicing the skill and lots of high volume of training, lots of muscular endurance, and very little, if any, really, um, strength or, or power training. And that's completely untapped potential. So, of course, if you're loading your body in the same way repeatedly, you're going to find that your body hasn't got as many different training stimuli to adapt to and to recover from. So it does make things more simple. But there is a lot of untapped athletic potential there. As soon as you do start throwing into the mix power and strength training, you're going to give yourself a much bigger athletic platform, but you're also going to be stressing the body more as well. So as soon as you do start throwing strength and power training into the mix, there's then the central nervous system to recover, which is something you don't get with Muay Thai training. It's more uh, mechanical fatigue and that aerobic system recovering. So that's a lot easier to actually deal with. And Logan stopped here and he's off again. So with strength being the, the underlying foundation of, of all your athletic properties, you need to be able to convert that into power so that you're explosive and you can, you can stop people, you can knock them out. <clears throat> but there's a massive, uh, but there's a fatigue cost to that. So we need to make sure we're managing that a lot better. So as soon as you do start adding strength and power, although there is massive benefit in your athletic ability to doing that, to really take you forward to, to express your, your true potential, there's a, there's a big risk of overtraining. And if you don't manage the, the training process too well, it all goes wrong and you end up overtraining very quickly or injuries occur. So the biggest benefits really are balanced development of all your athletic qualities to make sure that you can be the best fighter that you can be. So not just training the skill, we need to balance all that stuff up, but also you need to give yourself the engine to underlie all of that as well. And also balance up all the postural habits that we, that we get from fighting and that's in our, in our Muay Thai stance. So it's not always, you know, the, what's, what's ideal for defensive fighting posture isn't ideal for long-term posture and will result in, in injuries and problems later on. Especially once you get over 40, that's kind of what I've been finding. So you need to make sure as well as making you uh, perform really well that you also have a good structural, sound, long-term health benefit too. So the strength and conditioning method is more about balancing all of the athletic properties and making sure that you're not only developing them but also letting them recover so that you progressively build to a bigger and bigger long-term performance. And that's the approach I'm using, um, which is, is different to the, to the Thailand approach in that they're kind of targeting into one specific area and not really developing the whole package. So as good as they are, those fighters could be even better if they manage that training process a bit better. There's a lot of untapped potential left there on the table. And it could be even better if they, they got all of that, that approached. There'll be energy leaks and overcompensations that come from that repeated posture and not stabilizing all the muscles, just uh, basically just working on the accelerators and not the brakes. So the better brakes you have, the more power you can lay down. So really the main benefits are a balanced approach, 
and getting everything all of those plates spinning to give you the best potential. Of course you still need all of your skill development and that's something that the tyres really really go in for and you still need to be working that. The other big difference is that the tyres have a lot of time for their training whereas uh, Westerns we kind of have to make the best use of the limited time that we've got. So trying to squeeze the most effective work into the smallest amount of time is, is key for us and making sure we're recovering from that. And this is the other thing, recovery, the tyres do have that opportunity to train really hard um, and then rest. They can sleep and eat in the middle of the day, um, whereas we're not going to get the opportunity to do that necessarily in the West where we've got full-time jobs as well. So it is about trying to get as much as you can out of that training time and making sure that you're getting the most out of your body and progressing over that longer term, not just in the short term for, for a few weeks. And using strength and condition we also can go at our specific weaknesses so whatever the, the gaps are in our athletic profile we can work those and bring those levels up so we can fill those gaps quicker. So rather than just chucking high volume and, and time at your training it's about being more selective about what you need and specifically going at those weaknesses and bringing that up to improve your overall athletic profile and your performance and injury prevention. All things that are going to build to a better long term performance. Of course, I'm not saying that the methods in Thailand aren't effective. I'm just saying that there are gaps could, that could make the Thai fighters even better. And that the Thai method doesn't necessarily apply so well outside of Thailand with uh, more of a Western lifestyle and, uh, uh, and work and family commitments. So it's all about optimising the time that you've got to be the most effective. And that's what I'm trying to do with the programme and, uh, and applying the sports science principles and basically trying to save you time give you time back. Oh, incoming. I don't know where he's taking us.